On Christmas Day, as folks in Italy enjoy hot chocolate under their blankets, Brazilians are having chilled beverages at the beach. All of this, though, could alter in the future. Consider a world where the snow never stops falling, the cold never goes away, and survival is a daily battle. If the Earth experiences a lengthy winter, we will be in a post-apocalyptic state. The first problem would be a lack of resources. The Earth would freeze solid, crops would be destroyed, and food would become scarce. We would have to choose between hoarding and sharing in order to survive. Those who want to hoard will become solitary and ultimately ruinous. Scientists believe we will be in this predicament in the next years. On Earth, there are conflicting cycles, hot weather alternates with cold weather. However, these disputes will not persist forever, the conflict will finally end, and a lengthy winter will arrive. But how do these cycles function? Come with me to learn more about it. Cycles surround you. Let us begin by stating that we are surrounded by cycles here on Earth. Allow me to explain. Our lives practically revolve around them, a series of events that repeat themselves in the same order on a regular basis. In our planet and the universe, there are hundreds of distinct sorts of cycles. Some are natural, such as seasonal changes, annual animal migrations, or the circadian rhythms that govern our sleep patterns. Others, such as crop cultivation and harvesting, musical rhythms, and economic cycles, are created by humans. Every year on December 25th, the world celebrates Christmas Day. Christmas, in our communal vision, is made of snow and hot chocolate. This day is connected with snow and Santa riding his reindeer, bringing gifts and joy to all people, children and adults alike. If you live in Brazil, you will notice one thing, Christmas Day falls during the summer. Many individuals enjoy going to the beach to tan. On Christmas, there is no hot chocolate for the Brazilians, it would be insane to even consider making one. Instead, you could eat some ice cream. The only reason this happens is because of the seasons. The Seasonal Cycle you may already understand why we have seasons, but I believe it's worth studying because it will serve as a starting point for understanding the major topic of this video, the Milankovitch Cycles. Seasons exist as a result of the Earth's movement around the Sun and its tilted axis. The tilt of our planet's axis allows various portions of the world to receive varied quantities of sunlight as it round the Sun. As a result, seasons change in different places of the world at different times of the year. Summer brings more direct sunshine to the hemisphere that is inclined toward the sun, resulting in longer days and warmer temperatures. In contrast, the hemisphere tilted away from the sun has shorter days and cooler temperatures. During the winter, the hemisphere tilted away from the sun receives less direct sunlight, resulting in shorter days and cooler temperatures. Spring and fall are the transition seasons between summer and winter, occurring when the Earth's axis is neither tilted toward or away from the sun. The amount of sunshine received across the Earth is more uniformly divided during these seasons, resulting in moderate temperatures and more balanced weather patterns. Seasons have a huge impact on Earth's life. Plants and animals have adapted to shifting climates by regulating their life cycles with cues such as temperature and day length. During the winter, many animals migrate to warmer climates, and some flora only bloom during particular seasons. Seasons have an impact on human activity in addition to the natural world. Seasonal changes can have an impact on anything from our moods and behavior to the economy. Winter sports and activities, for example, are popular in regions where it snows, whereas beach activities are more widespread in places with warmer weather. Seasons, as you can see, are an important cycle that repeats on a regular basis, with each season bringing fresh growth and changes to the natural world. Warmer weather alternates with colder weather during the course of a year. Milankovitch Cycles Seasons exist as a result of the specific configuration of a planet's axial tilt with regard to its orbital plane around the host star. 
However, as Serbian scientist Milutin Milankovic pointed out a century ago, this is not the only factor that can influence the Earth's weather and climate. This brilliant scientist believed that the long-term, collective impacts of changes in Earth's location relative to the Sun are a strong driver of Earth's long-term climate and are responsible for initiating the beginning and conclusion of glacial periods, ice ages. Did I mention this guy was brilliant? He was well aware that what aerospace engineers refer to as orbital elements explain a planet's orbit. These are six fundamental numbers that assist characterize the movement of one object around another, whether it is an artificial satellite like JWST orbiting the Earth or a star around our galaxy's black hole. He initially considered what would happen to the Earth if one of these elements, known as eccentricity, gradually changed over time. Eccentricity shifts. The eccentricity of an orbit reveals information about its shape. The orbit is a circle when it is zero. The more you move away from zero, the more stretched and elliptic your orbit becomes. The trouble is, due to Saturn and Jupiter's gravitational perturbations, as well as other minor causes, the Earth's eccentricity, which is fairly modest, can vary over time, affecting the shape of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. As a result, the distance between the two bodies changes. Our seasons are slightly different lengths due to eccentricity, with summers in the northern hemisphere being roughly 4.5 days longer than winters and springs about 3 days longer than autumns. The length of our seasons eventually evens out as eccentricity reduces. Milankovic investigated how these fluctuations affect how much solar radiation reaches the top of the Earth's atmosphere and where this radiation arrives. He discovered that when the Earth's orbit is most elliptic, around 23% more incoming solar radiation reaches Earth during our planet's closest approach to the Sun each year than at its farthest departure from the Sun. The Earth's eccentricity is currently near its least elliptic, most circular, value and is progressively decreasing during a cycle of about 100,000 years. However, the eccentricity cycle has a negligible effect on global yearly insulation. Because variations in Earth's eccentricity are generally low, they play a minimal role in annual seasonal climatic variations. Obliquity shifts. But that's not the end of the story. Milankovic, being a genius, also took into consideration obliquity and axial precession. The obliquity is the angle formed by the plane of the Earth's orbit and the plane of the equator. Over the previous million years, its tilt has been between 22.1 and 24.5 degrees. Our seasons get more intense as the tilt increases. Consider scorching summers and freezing winters. Surprisingly, a greater tilt angle results in periods of deglaciation. So, higher tilt means more melting and retreat of glaciers and ice sheets. However, this impact is not universal. Higher latitudes have a greater variation in total sun radiation than places near the equator. The Earth's axis is currently tilted at 23.4 degrees, roughly halfway between its extremes. And, get this, the tilt angle is gradually decreasing during a 41,000-year cycle. Milankovic calculated that while our winters will gradually warm and our summers will cool, snow and ice will begin to accumulate at high latitudes. This results in vast ice sheets reflecting more of the sun's radiation back into space, promoting even more cooling. Precession of the Axis Let me begin by explaining what axial precession is. I'm not sure whether you're aware, but the Earth wobbles slightly on its axis, like a spinning toy top. This wobble, generated by tidal forces from the sun and moon, affects the rotation of the Earth and is referred to as axial precession. This cycle lasts around 27.7 thousand years and causes seasonal changes in one hemisphere to be more pronounced than in the other. Currently, perihelion, Earth's closest point to the Sun, occurs in the northern hemisphere during winter and in the southern hemisphere during summer. However, this will change in around 13,000 years, causing the northern hemisphere to experience more intense solar radiation and the southern hemisphere to experience more moderate seasons. 
Apsidal precession occurs when the Earth's entire orbital ellipse wobbles owing to interactions with Jupiter and Saturn. This cycle lasts around 112,000 years and adjusts the orientation of Earth's orbit relative to the elliptical plane. The combined precession cycle of axial and apsidal precession lasts around 23,000 years on average. In addition, the North Star of Earth changes with time, with Polaris and Polaris Australis being the current stars, but it was Kochab and Furkant a few thousand years ago. Milankovitch's Outlandish Prediction Small changes put in motion by Milankovitch cycles influence Earth's climate over very long timescales, leading to significant changes in our climate over tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of years. Still, what he discovered is both fascinating and terrifying. The Earth will soon experience another ice age. Milankovitch made two major assumptions. One, that fluctuations in radiation at some latitudes and seasons are more significant than at others. Two, the obliquity cycle is the most important of the three for the climate. Using these figures in his own mathematical model, he calculated that ice ages occur every 41,000 years. Given that the previous known ice age occurred around 20,000 years ago, the next ice age is expected to occur in the next 20,000 years or so. Subsequent study, however, revealed that ice ages occurred at 41,000 year intervals between 1 and 3 million years ago. However, some 800,000 years ago, the period of the ice ages stretched to 100,000 years, matching Earth's eccentricity cycle. While several theories have been presented to explain this change, scientists have yet to come up with a definitive answer. The transition problem is another name for this issue. In any case, according to the most recent astronomical estimations, a new ice age will not occur for another 50 to 100,000 years. Predictions Accuracy Making long-term climate predictions for planet Earth is no easy task. In theory, a decent estimate of the fluctuations of the orbital elements through time would simplify everything, if only we had a good model relating these variations to climate variations. However, the orbital forcing mechanism that affects climate is still poorly understood. We now lack a decent model that expresses climate changes as a function of orbital ones. As a result of these factors, research to better understand the mechanisms that produce variations in Earth's rotation and how particularly Milankovitch cycles interact to affect climate is still ongoing. The hypothesis that they drive the timing of glacial interglacial cycles, on the other hand, is widely recognized. Alright everyone, here's where the video ends. Thanks for watching. What do you want to hear next? Please let me know in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.